I have one question asking. Who da paving it? Who paving it? He paving it. Who paving it? She paving it. Who paving it? I paving it. Who paving it? We da paving it. Who paving it? He paving it. Who paving it? So it's no surprise. The girls from foreign decided that we had to speak on a few things from this week um, surrounding everything that's been going on with some con artist behavior, mm-hmm. some diaspora wars. But before we get into that, we have our special guest. He's come back for more. Our Mr. Dingo from hello. last week. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. <laughs> he's decided we're not that bad, so he's come back to the studio. Um, for me, I don't even know where to start because, you know, this is a situation where I'll start by saying this. Those of us who reside in the UK have raised this issue constantly. And if you've been on the rock this week, we're talking about white chocolate 758 so for years mr we paved have... the way yeah <laughs> <laughs> mr columbus wine um, <laughs> <laughs> so for years loads of people who reside in the uk and people of west indian descent have constantly called him out on his behavior on the way that he's trying to capitalize off the culture and be self-serving with it and the way he is being a con artist and dishonest about his identity in order to capitalize and gain more following, more money and all these things. And we do remember Kim had called him out about a stealing of a design. If people don't know what design it is, it's the I'm here from the Denary segment t-shirt. He was called out over that. He was called out over his logo design. He's been called out multiple times by people in the diaspora about his behavior and what he's doing to the culture he's clearly in it for himself and it's a situation where where people over here were speaking about it a lot of the times did this cause argument on social media people did come back and say you know people are jealous of him there was even some comments saying you know those who are not born in the west indies shouldn't speak on west indian problems and this was a good, this was a good three years back and now this so-called west indian problem is now the UK's fault, mm. allegedly, mm. because now people are coming to find out what he's really about. And it was a platform yeah. called 4-8 where, first of all, I don't even know why he was on there. I'm really confused. It was something with Black Lives Matter. He ain't black and he ain't ever post nothing to say we matter. So I didn't know why he was there in the first place. That's what it confused me to me because I heard it, it was like a Black Lives Matter podcast yeah. and then he was on there. There was another um, white was person white on there. Was well. I don't know what oh, it was yeah. about. I haven't really seen the whole video apart from that clip i don't think it's a black lives matter podcast but i think that's what they were discussing mm. at that time and mm. he came on and introduced himself as a professional whiner as one of the <laughs> hosts on the table didn't actually understand what he did mm. and that's where he came out with the outburst that you know he paved the way for caribbean dancers and I whiners to come after him i think what was a problem with that comment was when he paused as he had to think about his answer um i found that he knew what he was saying because it didn't flow off the tongue like how you talk about anything else. Mm. You have mm. to think about it, say it, and then afterwards, at the end, you're like, oh, I don't understand why people are looking me, looking at me like this, but it's like you just made a big statement about a culture that don't make no sense. The thing is, he knew exactly what he was doing because it's funny because we don't even follow him. A lot of us in the UK, we don't even know what this man does in his spare time. We're not his, we're not his following. He doesn't really make money in the UK, his market is not here. So after this comment, of course, you go and do your digging and your due diligence because everyone likes to say, you know, you didn't watch the whole interview, you didn't get the whole picture. So I said, all right, cool, I'm going to go peep and get the whole picture. So we had a post when he reached 150K followers and he used the same language again about paving the way. Now, this wasn't even this month. This was months before. So he clearly believes that he is a pioneer in winery. And it's confusing to me because if you or the professional whiner that paved the way. I mean, Spin Pooch Inc. would like to have a word. The Grass Skirt community would like to have a word. <laughs> there's there's so many other... like it, it doesn't even make sense. And you don't even realise the gyration of the waste and the dancing you're doing is all deep-rooted into our culture. And a lot of it, you don't even know the origins of. Mm. So how can you now mm-hmm. pave the way for something that, first of all, your ancestors were not on the right side of? Having what? a statement he put out with the logo was a, was like a slap in our face because it just contradicted what the point was. And it's like, 
you're hearing people explain why they're frustrated with you and then instead of you talk um hearing a point you're like oh i didn't mean it like that it was done done because of editing xyz but it's done and he slapped my put your logo at the bottom i thought that how can you turn around and say it was the editing but said it already a few months back so how is it editing i'm i'm confused but i think what's more problematic for me was the dismissive behavior towards those in diaspora when these things did come up because i remember on some of these soca pages i think it was even follow soca mm -hmm. where they highlighted the concerns that was highlighted by kim and other people about the denary design and the comments were absolutely dragging her for speaking her truth and the thing is she's always been someone who is very involved in the culture and she speaks out even when other people don't want to do it mm. so for me it was very funny how much people jumped into the defense of this man and made it seem like oh so you're saying white people can't come in and you're saying that you know white people can't enjoy it it's not about white people coming in and enjoying but it's when you come in and try to colonize and capitalize off what we're doing for your own personal for your, and you're not mm. even trying to reach back it's not even like you're using your platform to bring attention to others you're everything you're doing is completely self-serving and now you have this arrogance to yourself that you're paving the way and what makes it even worse is that we always get the you're not supposed to be part of this conversation if you're not west indian born don't talk but i'm like this is a conversation where we, we all should be talking we're not asking a back home direct question like, you know, what's the route home from common mayor school? We're talking about a UK person with a fake persona going to the West Indies and capitalizing it. And we trying to tell you about this person being dismissed because we're not now West Indian enough to talk. And now three years later, this man has 160,000 followers or whatever the number was he hollered out. And all the people whose backs he took it off, they ain't even their 10K. And I see so many different people who should be having this sort of following. Why is there a fascination over a white man stirring where you've got other people like Oh Great Choice who put out content? content. Yeah, In fact, even when I was going to St. Lucia, he was one of the main pages that I actually said, you know what, I want to go to St. Lucia. He broke things down. That's the sort of stuff the tourism board should be putting their money into, the mass band should be putting their money into. But yet a white man putting on an accent on stage with Shen Sia saying, I'm from Denari. <laughs> is, it's, it's ridiculous and then it also sparks another argument which, which I want to unpack with you guys later on why is it easier for people in the West Indies and where else to accept somebody else on a fake persona but it's so dismissive to those who are actual descendants of the Caribbean because he didn't have no problem walking in and saying I'm Lucian and people, people loved it they booked him, they paid him but let somebody with a, a, a Lucian parent say I'm Lucian oh no no you can't do that mm, mm, mm. you can't do that now it's important for everyone to understand is he holds no weight here zero so for people it was funny because I found that it was UK soccer scene or UK Twitter that ripped him that demolished him and it was like you Americans you West Indians were loving him it was us that made it a problem for you and now you lot want to run with the jokes do the memes, la, la, la. But you wasn't doing this three years ago. You had enough time to rip him. But now he's on a British platform saying his story and saying what he has to say. Now, oh, I want to jump on a bag wagon. Why wasn't you stopping this man before we got here? That's the biggest issue here. And the other issue I have is people are more focused on what the original platform was and why he was on there. And now people are trying to say, okay, was there any West Indian bones on, on the panel? That It doesn't matter who was on the panel. The fact is this man was brazen enough to come on to big air and say with his chest what he said. It doesn't matter if it was an all-Nigerian panel or if it was an all-Irish panel. The fact that this man is bright enough to come on stage and or whatever it was, on air, on the platform, and brazenly say it, that's the issue. It shouldn't be why is non-West Indian people talking about West Indian issues because that weren't even the whole thing. They just asked him what he does, and he said he was a professional whiner. I don't know if you thought the same, um, Dingo, but for me, there's so many layers here. Mm -hmm. So many. And even when I listen to this being discussed on um, another West Indian podcast that myself and Motive listens to, Motive has just come into the studio as well, I know podcast, it, they, 
the origins of what white chocolate has done is never really discussed. It's more about, okay, what was the platform he was on? What was he talking about? Why was it discussed there? And, you know, they did touch on, is there a bigger picture about how, you know, people see white people and things like that. But I feel like sometimes these discussions, this is where everybody of the culture needs to come together instead of separating into, okay, who was African and talking about it? Who was West Indian born talking about it? Because the gatekeepers over here said, no, we don't want you. His money wasn't made here. He getting paid to be stirring up his waist in all these islands. They ain't call no one else over. There's so many other dancers that don't even get some of the opportunities that he's getting. And it's just like, why is the support being put in someone with no connection than being put into those who are actually a part of the culture, in the culture, and doing positive for the culture? I haven't seen him do one thing for St. Lucia, apart from U758 to get ahead. Mm. So And with the flag. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's sad. It's just... Having people, having white people in our culture, they are accepted to be in our world, but we're not accepted to be in theirs. And it's getting sick and tiring of allowing people culturally, not culturally, appropriating our culture, and we're just sitting back and not taking ownership now. Um, I think as a community, we need to start speaking up and saying wrong is wrong and right is right. I'm not saying white people can't. <laughs> enjoy our culture because our culture is beautiful of I course love it. it's and very I'm, it's very inclusive yeah, sorry to but there, there has to be a line drawn i think understanding someone's cultures first is more important than spinning your ways because anyone can dance anyone can make a song anyone could do anything but if you don't understand the deep roots that come with it even the the issue of creating a mass band alone mm. like there is more to it than them two days on the road Mm-mm-mm. and white people seem to exploit that a lot and I think with him, he has exploited that part because he's able to fly out to all parts of the world, especially in that region, and do launches, as I said, be in videos, have his logo everywhere. Now he's got merchandise and people are buying it. And it's like, well, why are we not looking at home? Home is poor as it is. Mm. Mm. But we're paying the white man whose family members most probably would have put us here anyway. Mm. I don't know. It's true, it's true, because there's, even in all the different islands in the Caribbean, there's a lot of local artists which mm-hmm. probably don't even get half the amount of love that they're pouring into Mr... What's his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, into um, him. So um, it is it is sad to see, man. It does beg the question, why is everyone so quick and easy to give him the attention and the opportunities to do this that and the other when there's a lot of other people that are more understanding of the culture that's grown up around the culture and been involved and they don't get half the opportunities he's getting it's it's a bit it's a bit crazy still and then for him to come out and make that statement that he made on that podcast (sighs) mate (laughs) it's 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 crazy it's crazy and the statement's made not once it's actually crazy like obviously yeah they say he's from the uk or whatever but I, di- I didn't even know that, we honestly. Know like, the first <laughs> I heard of him, or whatever, like, I've heard of him before, whatever, and I heard he was Lucian. So I was like, okay, whatever. And then, obviously, he went to St. Lucia last year and saw him out there. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's that whatever guy. And I didn't think anything of it, innit? Obviously, I heard, I heard he was Lucian. I saw him in St. Lucia, so I was just like, okay, whatever, innit? It's only when I got back and then there was a discussion was having with some people, whatever, and they was like, oh, yeah, he's British. I was like, what, are you sure? Like, yeah, he's British. I was like, oh, snap, I even know. I thought he was, like, Lucian this whole time. He's got the flag and everything. So I had proper thought, like, my man was Lucian, you understand? Yeah. So it, it's a bit mad. <laughs> it's a bit mad. And you know what, as well, even, was it last year? Mm. Or the year before? I can't remember when it was, but you know, oh, God, what's that guy's, the guy's name? The guy that does all the videos now. The comedian, he does all the videos, rapping, or whatever. He's got yeah, the mad the, eyebrows. Yeah, the funny yeah he done a video with on YouTube. Yeah, 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 dancing. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, yeah. hold on, why of all the people, why the hell have you gone to this guy to do this stupid video? Do you understand? Mm-hmm. And man, it's, it's it's crazy. It 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 does beg the question why, but it's like who really has the answer to that question? To be honest, mm. Mm. it's it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, 
for me, I just don't understand this obsession with celebrating white people doing the bare minimum. Because mm. if we're really going to be blunt about it, okay, he's white and he's dancing in beat and he's whining. Okay, how many West Indian men can really work up way more than that? And I don't see these opportunities. It's true. It's true. I would like to see Spinny from BIM with 160k for his <laughs> waistline. Now, I can see why he got the 160. He need more than 160 if you see that waist. But <laughs> him just being white, the gravitation, the obsession, the, oh, my God, this is amazing. We must celebrate. Like, that why is it? Gives a, them a head yes, start. Why do we set the bar so low for mm. other wa- races, mm. but then we set it so high for our own? So it's like he can't compete with all the rest of his waistline. But because he's white, it's seen as he's doing some excellent movement that, you know, no one can't touch and he deserves all these praise and endorsements. But then the next person, the next black person that does the same thing, is still not up to standard. Why is it that we are putting harsher judgment on our own people Mm. but allowing any bare minimum through the borders? You think it's a generation thing? Only because back in the day, acceptance was so key. And people do a lot to feel accepted in the world just so that they can just navigate every day. I think like as we're getting older and our generation per se, our mouths are a bit more loose. They're a bit more vocal. Wrong is wrong to us. Mm, mm, and mm. I think if this situation happened a couple of years ago, I don't think it would have got the attention it did. But because of social media being present and the way young people are so vocal when somebody messes up, he's getting all that negative attention that he deserves. Mm, but mm. I'm just trying to say is back in the days people wanted to feel accepted and feel that they could be around white people and stuff like that so that they wasn't outcasted and I just wondering does that link back to why white people can just come into our world and we just accept it because they, they own so much of our businesses as well mm. that's a good point <sighs> well um, even everyone before I even forget my manners mm-hmm. <laughs> traffic delays and all that kind of thing there. Um, but I would say white people in the Caribbean are celebrated because it's unique. It's unique to see them whine and have the experience mm. and buy into our culture because it's like, finally we're accepted by them, which is kind of a thing, which is weird because when you think about it, um, when you see a white man whining, you're like, one, where do you get rid of from? <laughs> how do you come by that? So you start selling that on eBay. It's, it's like it's almost like even when we look at it in dating aspects, most people won't go for a white person unless they are actually in the black culture. So when you get somebody that appreciates mm. your culture mm. coming in whining, it's not that long thing we have to explain. Oh, this is what we do. So if they buy into it, you're already halfway in. So you can come in, do your thing, and you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, this man can whine. This man's in the culture. He's eating our food bring him in and we welcome him we open doors we put chair lay him knife on foot table come in and then someone's like he then leaves and then says oh you're leaving. you know what I had some great stuff there you know gone in market for themselves and all of a sudden you come back to us and selling our own things and that's what that's what's happening to in the Caribbean the Caribbean has literally gonna be a place where you can actually buy into get your culture steal from it come back and party and no one says nothing until now when you have you know these loose comments like you paved the way for black people to whine Bruh, we've been doing it. We've been whining even in slavery. <laughs> but even the loose comment, would the loose comment would have caught as much fire as it did if those in the UK didn't kick off the way we did? Because he a, he was able to say this back in February. None of us follow him. Mm. No one in the UK really knows what he does in his day to day. So mm. we had to go into his profile and within these past couple of days to see it. Mm. And this post was months ago. So really and truly, would there have been such an outburst if we didn't make the noise we did? And this was just before Trinidad and Carnival he done it too. And he went... Do you know, I find it weird because, I mean, um, touching on your point before, um, when we were talking about uh, shout-outs to I Know Podcast for this one, and we were on that discussion, and it's amazing to see that we highlight things in the UK, but don't get the love when we go back home, mm-hmm. which is strange, because back home, you've been running around doing things, we know what's going on, but it's like, like you said, until we say something, all of a sudden, oh boy, this, this is outrageous, but you like where the people claiming him. You like gave him the platforms to come through, have your mass band, give him free stuff, and I'm out here paying grands and grands of money and can't even get free shorts. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's and we, and true. when we're over there, we're buying local too. We ain't spending all our Do money you know, exactly, down in, exactly. in the exactly. tourists. We're buying local. Mm-hmm. We're buying the coconut water off the roadside. Exactly we're, so. we're actually putting our money directly back into the culture, mm-hmm. even though we're never going to be West Indian enough. Mm-hmm. We still come back, we see our family, and we still 
we understand how things are over there so we don't go over there thinking we're better than we understand our tourism privilege as well because it's mm-hmm. a thing but then this white man can walk you pure acceptance likes mm-hmm. endorsements i think there was even something with digi so he did i was like yeah. before they fixed the internet connection for half of these people <laughs> yeah, they're endorsing a white man stirring i've had enough i'm getting limited data when i go there <laughs> if you have a chance when you look on kim Ye's insta and her highlights could no mass because what i liked on it when she was explaining the story she showed news articles um, from St. Lucia and highlighted... He's been saying this since 2017. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So it's not even like it's come out today. This man has been talking the things like for a long time. So it shows that people have is their lack of understanding or of lack of knowledge or scared to say what they have to say. But we should have stopped this in 2017. Mm. He only went over there as it's in an article, to do something to work with children or whatever it was. Hmm. He spent a couple months out there, he make a girl, well, you get a girlfriend, whatever, that happened, and then you're claiming a culture. Hmm. And then you're going to these newspaper articles, saying what you're saying, and nobody saw that as an issue. Hmm. Hmm. And it's okay to let white people to, um, appreciate your culture, but you've got to allow them to know certain languages are not going to be happening. You can't have them, that's inappropriate what you just said. You can't say you paved the way for dancing. How dare you? Hmm. Like, that is a slap in your f- that's a slap in our faces. So when he said that before on Instagram, when was that? Twenty um February, just before Trinidad Carnival. Oh, so February gone. Yeah. When he reached his okay. hundred and fifty K. This is what I'm saying. So cause we don't follow him and we don't endorse him. We don't see these things. These things. Because yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. on his page. Mm-hmm. So the fact that those who do follow him saw this and still were key 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 to it. And out of all of this, let me scroll back through. Um, see, now I've got to go and type in the man's name to actually find him because I don't follow him. The post is still here, looking at me in my face from the 28th of February. But then you post an apology, apologising for something that you said back in February and you've now brought it back up this month. So, no, we do not accept your apology. And I'm tired of people exercising their white privilege when they get caught as well. It's always, oh, please, please don't kick me out. I love That's your culture. That's why I didn't even bother reading the apology. You guys are amazing. Because I feel like... He only apologised because of the, the outrage, yes. the backlash. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason for apologising. If nobody had said nothing, like he obviously done that post in February and nobody said anything, he continued to do what he was doing. But he came back, made that comment, and now, obviously, we, see we have seen it. Because 4 is, a, made is a more of a, a wider platform, mm-hmm. so we would have He's seen it. He's obviously come yeah. and apologised, and it's like, well, no, we're not going to accept these crocodile tips crocodile tears because you said what you said you meant what you said mm-hmm. you just didn't mm-hmm. expect to receive so much fire about what you said you understand so um yeah that's why i didn't even bother also, with the apology or anything to be honest i was upset with motto and his statement because he should have understood where everyone was coming from you can't say to everyone i understand what he's saying no you shouldn't understand what he's saying you a man that likes dancing yourself he basically said he paved the way for you hmm. and you've accepted that mm. And you are a big artist over there, not just as a performing artist, you're writing, you're producing behind the scenes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're doing so much for your culture and you've allowed another man to say he paved the way for you. Basically, that's what he said. That's a slap in your face and you're going to accept that. Mm, mm. But they're friends, right? Now nah, the friends should have drawn you out. But see, but see, this is mm. the problem though when people... Uh, see, if I was in that situation, I'd have to think before even going to social media. Because sometimes not everything needs to be said on social media because then you make yourself look a bit left when you're coming out with those kind of comments. Mm-hmm. Sometimes talk to your boy. If they're, if you're really boys like that, talk to your Have boy. Have a private conversation. Exactly so. Mm-hmm. And say what you got to say because when you come out online mm. without thinking and like, oh, let me keyboard tap, 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 tap. And then be like, wait, hold on. And everybody's looking at you like, mm-mm, this ain't right. You do, your, you do yourself as much damage as your brethren. So sometimes sit back and actually say, you know what, let me talk to my boy in private. And if you then feel like you need to come out and defend or say what you want to say, articulate that and come correct rather than moving loose on, on the DL, I would say. I do find a lot of his associates slash mates or whoever, there was a lot of silence this week too. Because I pay attention, as Kara always says, pay attention to who don't speak as well as who does speak. Mm. And there was a lot of silence. When really and truly, if it wasn't for COVID, carnival season would have went ahead as normal. He would have been back spinning in different islands. Whichever mm. bands endorsed him would have still had him on the thing. And what month we in September? So really and truly, the only carnival coin this may have affected would have been Miami. Mm. By then, he would have done collect all these coins for the season and been done. So why are people being quiet now? Because it's, it's, 
no one wants to talk in it. No one likes shame. Who likes to shame to say, oh, I endorse this man? It's like somebody fully embarrassing you and saying that you've endorsed them. This is your boy. This is your. This is somebody that you're actually prepared to work with. And then they come out and say that. You're like, oh, well, boy, I don't know what I'm going to say now because it's all about branding. It's, it's like anybody that does a scandal when it comes to a branding situation, some people straight away disown them because like rather than work with them, it's like, no, nope, straight away, I'm not doing it because the, the culture is you've embarrassed us. We let you in, you embarrass us now. I don't want no, I don't want to do you no more. So, so you let him. Let me just say that again. <laughs> you let him in. Two deep <laughs> <laughs> You let him in. No, and now you're upset. Big up solution though, but oh yeah. But so you're telling me he went he went there to pretty much do a, a community outreach program. Well he did outreach for <laughs> and then come and do all of this. Either way, he only went out there to for and you make a get a girlfriend and then after that he becomes Saint Lucian. And mm. um, he has a Saint Lucian can't be Saint Lucian though. So but but this is part of my problem because I understand certain conversations you literally cannot be a part of. If you were not born and raised in the West Indies, there is certain things that you just can't speak on because you didn't live it and do it. But certain situations you can speak on because I feel like sometimes you need to widen the conversation to have the real conversation. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them scenarios where I felt like everybody of West Indian descent you know, had had a valid point, especially where he's come from a place where none of the West Indian people even know you over here. True. Like, I don't think I've even seen him in a fet over here. I don't think I've ever seen him. I've seen him once when we went to the Nisha Independence a few years ago. That was the only time I ever saw him. Was he there? Was that when it was like in North or something? Yeah, it was. It was worse. Yeah, I was supposed to go and heard it was good. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah apart there. from that, I've never yeah, actually seen, I've him. seen him. And I've been in here for how many years? You are Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I've never actually seen him once, not once. But that's that, those are the people that say Carney instead of Carnival, innit? I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing I want to talk about because sometimes I find people with the least knowledge have the biggest voices. And mm. I think this also feeds into the argument of people that maybe haven't even travelled over here to experience. They believe that people are over here with no knowledge and just speaking on things they know nothing of. And there is some people out here where, you know, their grandparent might be half of something and, you know, they're speaking on behalf of others with no knowledge. There are people like that. Mm. When you're dealing with more first-gen people who have more of an understanding, who, you know, go back to the islands often, stay in constant dialogue with their family and really go into the history and why we do what we do and, our, and your houses are more cultural, I don't think they should be dismissed the way they are because I'm pretty sure if all of us in this, in, in this room right now put flags in our Twitter bio. All it takes is one person in the West Indies to have a bad day and they'll want to try and pull your cards. They'll mm. be questioning the authenticity of you. But yet, this white man, no one questioned the authenticity of him when he was supposed to go on some sort of program to St. Lucia. And now he's 758. Like, what? That is a statement. For you to actually put 758 in your name and no one speak, that is the ultimate come in. That is the ultimate mm. endorsement. And he's still going there today. That's plantation vibes, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no, it fully is, though. Because you think about it, you think how far we've come in life yet, especially the Caribbean, where you look at some places where you still got plantations, look like really looking like plantations out here. And you think to yourself, how can a man come from overseas, come in, settle down, learn everything, come true, and then be like, accept it because now you sound like us, you're living with us now. Mm. And then be like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to take the culture and endorse it. It's like we fully... It's like, you know when you... It's, like, it's almost like parenting. You know when you fully, like, don't have a bad relationship with your parents, mm. but for it, you're forever seeking acceptance. Mm. So mm. finally the slave masters let you free, <laughs> let you go off and do your thing, and then you'll come back to them, look at what I done. I got Soka now. It's great. We can walk up. And he comes in, oh, yeah, I like to do this. Walk up with you, and then leave and take everything in culture. It's like, oh, yeah, finally the acceptance. So you've let him in that you've done something great. But technically you haven't because right now somebody's coming in taking what should be yours and making it for them mm. it would be totally different if he brought on a wave of black people with him and brought up the culture and was like this ain't even for me it's about putting a platform right and, and everybody eating good that is totally different I will have no qualms I agree will you come it. in and say I paved the way for black people mm -mm. stop it right there cut <laughs> Arius <laughs> Arius him right now and this for me should be an example as mm. to how we actually care about the culture over here 
So what people don't understand is that Caribbean culture is probably the most disrespected culture in the UK. Mm-hmm. Let alone the little bit of London we're in. And black people, what are we, 2 3% of the whole of the UK? Mm-hmm. And we already know, even in workplaces, you, they'll be like, oh, so where's your family from? You will outright say, oh, my parents are from Barbados. Oh, yeah, Jamaicans, we love them. <laughs> it's like people don't even acknowledge mm. Caribbean culture here the way they should. And people only want the best parts of it. Mm. Hundred. And a lot of the time they want the Caribbean culture, but not on Caribbean people. Mm. So we are very big at calling people out. And I think we get a lot of slack for Notting Hill Carnival because people look at stuff that happened on the side roads mm. and all that mm-hmm. stuff and be like, mm-hmm. oh, you guys mm-hmm. let anyone into your carnival. Mm. If you actually was at Notting Hill and you were actually was in a band and involved in carnival, it's a complete different situation to the little small clip you may see mm. where they're playing a bit of jungle music around the back. Mm. And I think people need to understand the black people history mm. in the UK more. I understand that even Caribbean people in the UK, we're only maximum, what, three generations in? Mm. If that, depending on when your family got here. Mine never came here in Winrush, so we're probably a little less. But most people, it's maximum three generations. So that would be grandparents. They had kids and their kids' kids are probably the ones now who are teenagers and, mm-hmm. and walking around. And I think the African community is, what, maybe two generations? Yeah. So yeah, that, yeah. we have not been over here for a long time, but we are very, very sensitive when it comes to the culture. Hence why this was a no-go for us. White chocolate could not make any money off us in the UK because we're not having it. Mm. You cannot come to me, me as in the, the scene, and try and market yourself as a St. Lucian and then get booked <laughs> for all these bands and mm. now you're on BBC talking for us. That could not happen here because we would have a lot more to say. So I think this is where we really have shown how we feel about the culture. So I don't think there should be much question about whether we're cultured enough or not. Because the the argument between those born back home and the one here, it's, it's, you're never really going to get to the root of it. Because if you have that conversation, all people are going to say is, oh, people have to get in conversation, don't want nothing for them, and we have identity problems. Me and Kyra spoke on episode one about the law that was passed here, about birthright citizenship. If your parents are not British, you are not entitled to birthright citizenship if you was born after a certain year. Mm-hmm. It's Google. Mm, that's mad. Mm. So you can understand now being born in a country that has already told you, you don't belong here. You belong to the Caribbean with your parents because you guys ain't English. So now you're raised very, very close in your culture because your family already know what the world's like out there in the UK. They make sure they teach you as much as they can. Your household stays very cultured. You make often trips back home, all these things. But now you cannot now be proud of that and represent it because you're not West Indian enough. Make it make sense. It don't make sense because I personally feel a lot of the time those who have come over here from back home and come here, the sacrifice put into that, even Mm. if you came through the wind rush, Mm. when you think you've left your predominantly black country to come over here to be told no Irish, no blacks, no dogs, to become to be even in the category hmm. of a dog, yeah. right? Or lowest of the lowest. To do jobs at working walking in snow that you've probably never even seen in your life at all six o'clock in the morning to feed your kids that are here. Or if your kids are even back home. So th- I, I don't understand when the Caribbean come and tell you about, oh you guys are Caribbeans because with well, the okay, S you know, don't I mean? take the piss. It don't make sense because the struggles that some people did over here to send back money over there just so you can have two bread fruit. It don't make sense. It don't, it's a disrespect because I will find it uncomfortable if I left my home country knowing that I had to provide for my family that I may create here as well as back home. To then go home and be told in my black land, uh, you're not black enough. You're or your Caribbean family's enough. not Caribbean nah. enough. Mm, sorry, mm, it mm. can't run for me. It, I it think personally can't. This situation was an eye opener for back home and seeing how we are over here. Um, I think there's a bit more respect now for us, given as well. And I hope that you can just see that in the UK, we are very much diverse and we are unified and we are one. And that you shouldn't look at us like, because we're um, foreign, as you don't like to call us, that um, we don't understand. We might not understand to it the extent you do, but we understand enough to make sure our culture is not disrespected the way people disrespect it. Mm. And if we're talking about unity... Do you think anyone can come over here from the West Indies, for example, and let's say they start new at my workplace and they want to try to run joke at them about anything, whether it's the way they dress, sound. I don't even care if you're from the island that my family's from or not. No, that can't run. 
that mm. can't run because the way I see it is whether it's my parents that are West Indian born or me. Mm. You are me and I am you. Because if someone dis West Indian people, you are disrespecting my family and my parents. Mm -hmm. So the way we go in straight away, like you cannot, it, uh, no. Mm. Straight off the back, it's a problem. And even the, the situation we had a few weeks back with that show on BBC Three. Oh, yes. yes it yes. was more about the representation because it was like, we don't have a problem with you making comedy skits and including things of West Indian culture to make jokes of, because we do make jokes ourselves. Mm. But read the room and have somebody of West Indian descent, at least, in the room, in the writer's room. Mm. I understand some of the actors were also whatever, but when you look at the comedy they were trying to make, it was stereotypical comedy feeding off white views of us already. And you were doing it for white comedic laughter because it was a very uncomfortable skit to watch. Mm. And even when you watch how that was handled, it shows how disrespectful our culture is again. Because, again, those in the in the UK were like, this is disrespectful. Mm. And then it's like, oh, well, it's funny how you're sensitive now, but when it was a skit about African people last time, no one had nothing to say. And it, it took for it to actually get back to Jamaica. Mm. And people within, you know, politics, politics mm. to get involved and say, this is disrespectful. To where people in higher places had to say this is disrespectful for them to say, all right, cool. But before it was, oh, we're being sensitive. And, and this is where I feel like there needs to be more conversations. I definitely want, I will definitely like to collaborate maybe with a podcast in the West Indies because I like to have those sort of conversations. But it's, it's, it's something needs to change now because we can't be the only ones saying unity. But then when it's on the other side now, now 758's been exposed, it's a UK problem. Because our gate's been shut. I think people would it more expect it if it was a UK problem because we are technically in the white person's country. Yep. So they would expect us more to be like, you know what, we should be the ones endorsing him because we're surrounded by white people. But technically, this man's gone over and you lot have welcomed him in and look what he's done to you. And the UK is just not for it. I don't think we are as naive as people try to make out that we are. Um, mm. Because I definitely I think in the Caribbean is the opinion that, oh, they're not over there they're watered down and not fully that and they just let anybody in. I don't think it works that way. So we definitely need to improve the conversation um, and have that conversation where we can actually feel safe enough to do so. And nobody, even if you might feel offended by it, it's not that deep. It's a case of we need to actually have that conversation, break it down and see how we can come and do better so that these certain circumstances don't happen again. It's good if you're uncomfortable because it means you're learning. If you're Agreed. not uncomfortable, there's a problem. That's it. I don't think any of us have any problem knowing when not to speak. Mm. But then you're not going to tell me not to speak in a situation where I actually contribute to the situation at hand because now you're being dismissive because we wouldn't do it the other way around. We always see, you know, everybody on an equal playing field, whether it's them coming over here. Because what people don't realise is that we sit over here in uncomfortable spaces so that when people come over from the West Indies, they can go to a little a little rum shack or whatever it is that's over here. It may not be exactly what you have, but at least it's a space we can go down and sit and get something and even feel on route. Even mm. yeah, mm. just even cuz even people like to make jokes about things being authentic or not. But based on the cars that we've been dealt, have we really done that bad in London? I don't think so. No, it's not that bad. No. And and this is what I'm saying, people don't see that groundwork, that one local West Indian shop on the corner that people may make jokes about say the food's good if the service is bad. You don't know how hard it was for them to get that shop going. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't even feel for West Indian food that day, you will still buy it over the, the next man's shop down the road because we're putting directly back into our own pockets. Even when we're talking about our hairdressers, our barbers, we make sure we put back directly into ours where we can because we don't have much. But yet we're still not recognised as even part of the playing field. And I'm just like... People need to put respect on people in the diaspora because let's be honest, if it wasn't for people who left the island, you wouldn't be able to walk into Ibiza and have a soccer festival or mm. Poland or Tokyo or Germany, all these places. Wherever West Indian people are and people of West Indian descent, there is a demand, so there has to be a supply. Because mm. look how many times soccer artists come here and make money. And we sometimes we don't even want to go out, but because the artist is here, we're mm -hmm. going anyways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you ain't even in a party mood, but you're still there because you know... I don't care how much time they bring over Lil Rick, I'm going. Mm. It's true. Mm. Because we it's know true. the minute we stop going, the money stops coming in, so they stop booking them. Next thing you know, now carnival season, we will have artists like Little Mix performing. Because that's how this country runs. If we don't turn up for our people, people will slot in whoever they feel at the time. 
Next thing you know, now you have all David Getta remixes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, am, I, am I telling the truth or not? If we don't turn up, people will no, say, true. well, the people who do turn up like this. Or the side roles will become an actual carnival who can pull you in and be present, and be present as well. Because the fact that most people come to carnival and they go down to the side roles and don't come to the float, and at that carnival, this, I'm like, have you actually experienced the Mr. Hill Carnival? Or have you experienced one part of it, which is something that wasn't part of our culture in the first place? Um, can I just touch on something else, if you guys don't mind? I don't know if you guys want to add anything else before I kind of go a little <coughs> left. Dingo motive. Mm. Uh, no, you, you. Yeah. I want to talk about these these carnival and soca pages too, mm. because they play a very big role. Seen as a lot of the stuff that happens in our culture doesn't make mainstream news unless like a Rihanna does it. Mm. So really and truly, ain't no one really covering carnival in BBC News unless they're celebrity appearances, right? So, do you feel like these pages really understand their responsibility when they're putting out content? Because a lot of them will support the strippiness too. So the same 758 guy and others who have come to, you know, benefit off the culture, they will get posted on these pages. Mm. And if you, it doesn't matter how big or small you feel like your page is, if you are the central hub of where content is getting pushed out and someone that doesn't know about Carnival may come across your page and now want to join, if you are endorsing this foolishness, that is, that's counterproductive to the culture. Do you think they actually understand their platform, or is it more about likes and followers? Give me a page in particular. So I'm looking, I'm just referring back to um, a post in Kim's No Mass Highlight. Mm-hmm. And she did mention that um, a list of pages that did endorse this mm-hmm. white chocolate guy. Mm-hmm. So it just made me think, like, even now I'm just glancing at um, Follow Soka's page. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time they do give good content, they do give us some good cultural laughs and stuff, but then they also do post controversial things. They also did post, you know, some 758 stuff. And even when Kim was speaking, they did cover it. And it was in their comment box where she was attacked a lot. Mm -hmm. So I just want to talk about the responsibility of these pages. I don't know if you guys got any thoughts on this. Um, I definitely feel we should be monitoring the content we put out there because a lot of the times the content that's put out there is what's used um, against us and given negative connotations towards it because even when you look at, um, for example, when you see certain things in, in, or just come away from soccer a little bit, dance hall, and you've got like Jamaicans jumping off of speaker boxes and thing and all like pouring champagne on each other with the birthday things. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know what that's about, but sometimes when you see that, that's all people take. Yeah, yeah. And they say, oh, Jamaicans, you're the ones jumping off the speaker boxes. Oh, in Carnival, you're the ones wearing slack costumes and, you know, and people just gripsing you up anyway. How? And I'm thinking like, all right, we know what it is inside our culture, Mm -hmm. but outside of that, people just say, oh, well, Carnival, Carnival is just about slack wearing, slack women wearing slack dresses, outfits and all these kind of things and really um, not understanding how mass is actually played. Um, Although we should live in a world where you are free to post whatever and whatever you post out there, is for you and your people and your market. But I do feel like some things that we do post does unfortunately get taken the wrong way and we might have to look at posting the proper content where we actually think, well, do we actually want this to be what our image is and what it's being portrayed about or do we want to actually don't mind continue the way we're going and let people just talk amongst themselves and whatever it will be because at some point we're going to reach a crossroads and at that point we then we need to discuss how do we move forward? So don't let it go years and years by and not actually do something about it. Maybe we actually do have to pay attention and see what we are doing as ourselves as a culture to pro- procreate and actually go through forward from okay, that. Okay, I'm going to lift it. And no offense, no offense to follow Soka, by the way, just a page that, you know, I was looking at. But I do feel like sometimes they do post stuff sometimes more for the reaction. And they're not yeah. the only page that does it, but that was one of the ones mentioned. And I remember they did cover the previous situation with that same I'm man. I'm going to say, but we don't know who's in control and what they want to put out. Mm. So I can say I'm going to have Coke, for example, as my page, and I'm going to put everything out as Coke. But the people that are paying me to do that um, Insta page might be like, no, I don't want you to put Coke. I want you to put McDonald's. I want you to put Sprite. I want you to put all of this. I want controversy. I want people to be drawn to the page and see and 
do ever feel the way they want to feel. So it's about who's in charge of these Insta pages and what their purpose is for the page. Some of them actually lack controversy. That is mm. it. And as much as we can know what our culture is about and what we want it to be like, reality is we have to show the bags as well. We've got to show what others might see as ugly because it's a true reflection of what the world is. Mm. And I'll say shout out to Know Your Caribbean. That's a good page. Um, even shout out to Babsy. I don't really think people rate Babsy the way they should, you know. Strictly Babsy on IG. Because a lot of the time people will see like snippets of her content I think sometimes she's just online making noise and whatever. But she has been a very, very big part of the culture for a while. And people don't understand that behind the scenes, she actively tries to do things to help better the West Indian culture. And she gets a lot of backlash. She gets a lot of backlash. I remember there was even a time she was working towards um, just trying to raise awareness to... um, certain social issues not really going to go too deep into it on this podcast but well on this actual episode but she really does put herself out there sometimes with things that are going on and these are things that she doesn't have to do but she understands her platform and responsibility she has so I just really think that sometimes people need to give people their flowers because really and truly if you've got a social media page with over a certain amount of following it's up to you what you do with it really and truly because you're making revenue and she could easily just take her money and mind her business, but she still made sure that she's an active part of the culture. So I just want to give her her shout-outs as well because, you know, that that's someone that actually gives us content and who's actively doing stuff. I feel like you need to do that, though, right? You need to have... I think once you, like you said, once you have a certain amount of followers, you, well, yes, it is up to you what you do with your page, but use that platform mm, because mm. some of us who have the same voices but don't have the same following might not always reach those kind of numbers. So if you do have a, a larger platform, this is the time to bring issues to your people because we, you need to you need to be that, that, that voice that for everyone. Voice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than just staying quiet and doing your things for your own coin. So yeah, do sh- shout out to shout out to Babsy for real. So of course there's been a lot of conversation about, you know, white people in black spaces and within Caribbean culture. And one of the topics that came up as well was white mass band leaders. So I know, um, DJ Dingo, this is something that you also had a conversation about. So if you want to just take us away and we'll unpack. Um, well, over here, actually, I only know of one white mass band leader. I don't know if there's more. There could be, but there's for me, there's only one that properly stands out. And obviously, I don't know. I don't really know him that well, to be honest. I don't know his cultural background or where he grew up or what not what not but um while we're obviously this whole white chocolate stuff has blown up and we're talking about obviously white people in the culture it does obviously beg the question him obviously being a mass band leader for one of the biggest mass bands in the uk what is he in it for the actual culture or is he in it just to kind of benefit for himself is something that obviously he's been in the culture he's seen it or whatever he likes it and he's decided to do what he's doing and is it a thing where he's creating an opportunity for others or if he is just kind of in it for himself basically because mm. obviously he's the well the thing is i think he's the only one that's present so we see he's at the forefront of mm, mm, um, mm. band leaders and um, but we obviously know that behind, not him, but other bands, they, they mostly have a white president or whatever. Um, but I, as you said, I don't really know much about him, but one thing, he makes amazing costumes. Yes, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. In terms of that, that's what gives him his money. It's difficult with him because as much as he makes amazing costumes and he supports the cause to a certain extent, Technically, you could say he's appropriating the same breath because a lot of his designs are similar to the ones that you see back home. Um, some people back home have issues with him, but that's their turn to do. So it's trying to dissect him as a mass band leader, especially because of how he reacts to certain topics when it comes to the issue of blackness. Mm. Um, his sometimes his reaction is not what you'd expect you'd think he would be professional 
in how he talks to his masqueraders or future customers. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it comes across, especially with this whole pandemic, for example, um, it's money driven. Um, so only him and his people can really speak. But based off what I've seen during the pandemic, it shows that you could say he appropriates because the money was so important. And the way he was talking to people, like, well, if you don't pay, don't come back, and all of that is that. Think about Carnival as a bigger picture than sometimes just the product. This is people's lives. People have lost jobs. People got bills to pay. They've got kids' mouths to feed. They've got things to do. And you're talking to your black customers because the majority of his following and his masqueraders are black. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're talking mm. to them like they're the shit on your shoe. Mm. So, <sighs> I don't know. I think for me, I don't know. Just to bounce off what you're saying about the whole money and chargeback thing, obviously COVID affected a lot of businesses, mm-hmm. and as much as Carnival is, you know, a big celebration, it's a it's a big thing, and we see mm. it on such a mass scale, especially over here. We have millions of people attending. This is still lots of little small businesses. There's a lot of sponsorship and loans and stuff that go into actually funding the band, and I feel like I understand what he was trying to say. But I feel like and maybe because I have a more finance background, I kind of understood the frustration when you charge back small businesses and how that affects their future, you know, reputation and whether they want to go and get expansion loans and stuff. All these things are on record. I feel like it was maybe the tone of how he spoke, because if he was more open, people and say, look, we're a, you know, a small business. And if every time you charge back, it does affect us negatively in x we understand some of you you know may have lost your jobs due to the pandemic if you are one of those people please reach out to us privately and we can discuss and those of you who still want to jump with us let your question roll over that would have been more of a a more personalized tone so people can kind of understand we're not trying to rob you but i think people need to understand what a chargeback is and when you should use a chargeback because covid affected everything so if he didn't provide the product that he said he was going to provide because of his own personal, you know, mm. bad planning or whatever, mm. then if you choose to go down that road that he, he sold you something that he didn't provide, fine. But COVID stopped everything. All of us got concert tickets and flights that we can't go on. 100%. But do you, do you, do you feel like that's um, the manner in which he conducted himself led to the chargebacks? Well, this is the thing. I don't... Because cause I don't jump with that band often. Mm. I only sometimes get emails if I'm still on a ma- on certain yeah, like, yeah, sure, mailing sure, sure. list. So I understand when the pandemic was still going on, he was doing the professional route of, you know, Carnival's still going on until Notting Hill say it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I understand that bit. Everything goes ahead as normal until Notting Hill says it's not. But obviously by when the pandemic hit, furlough had already kicked in for a lot of people. Mm. So I don't know how he personally spoke to his masqueraders. But if it resulted in a large number of chargebacks, then maybe it could have been a delivery. Could have been. I don't know if we ever can get, you know, a member of come to come to the podcast. I don't know if they'll be open to it, but I would love to, like, actually dissect into that. I don't know, because when I've heard other people talk about their mass experience with other mass bands, they never once had this negative thing, like, oh, everything, the pandemic happened. A lot of people were like, yeah, I'm jumping with X, Y, Z, and they've been quite nice. My mass band said... Don't worry about things. Like, let's see what's going on in the pandemic. If you have to roll over your costume to next year, we'll pay X, Y, Z. And I thought, okay, that's the way you talk to people. Let people have the option. Mm. But when you're going on social media, and I can only speak from a social media point of view, and you're coming at us so negative, I'm thinking, rah, that is not professional. Would I want to jump with you? Well, if you can get mad that I'm expressing my feelings, I don't know. Yes, you make amazing costumes, but if I feel like the service is whack, I'm not doing it. Because the role experience is just as important as the costume. 100%. 100%. I think, I mean, coming from a business background, I get, you know, the show must go on until it can't go on because you've picked out laid X amount of money and you still have to provide a service no matter what until you know what the word is. Um, but I would say in the manner in which maybe he had gone down a certain road, um, he might have felt that, you know what, it's about the money and right now, maybe without thinking maybe about it, he might have just said, you know what, this is what's gone. I have to do this. I have to do that. Um, and basically, just said, right, 
it's all about the money rather than and sometimes the other side of business is being sensitive to the environment and knowing what you yourself is going through but also your your customer base as well and probably saying you know even if you put out a statement say right you know something just generic and like you said before letting people get back to you and you know working with them individually people might respect you a lot more but sometimes when i think the pound signs are thought about more than actual people's um feelings and and how people may be experiencing the pandemic it can go left so yeah I w- and it's important what the reason why we talk about it as well is because he's a white man like, mm. we're talking about our culture and how people perceive us in our culture based off that if you were going into that band per se and you got that reaction you might not want to come to the uk and play mass because mm. it's going to be like well if this is how this designer can treat me what else is the other designers are doing and this is just one person yeah, that's true. and how many bands are on the road Ooh. how many designers are on the road mm. how many amazing questions apart from that band do you see on the road sometimes mm. and he's become he's that that conversation will become a face because people were talking about it. on the um west indian instagram pages even it came up as topic and it's like raw this one person Mm. is making our carnival look like this is how everyone thinks mm. that he's see I don't know but there's a lot of people are quick to jump on negativity you know isn't it it's like that's oh, true scandal. that's true it's like oh yes right there mm. <laughs> that's a scandal right like there. Like, you know what I mean so, and sometimes you don't really need that sometimes you just need to let things play out and see what happens because obviously they're still going um, and, and that's good to see um, and we just have to see if we can all get back and jump again next year and be great do you think we'll have a carnival next year I, I don't know. So. You might need a vaccine to get lit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually hope so because, I mean, yeah, this We're year's been. Mate, this is year's been, I woke up this, in a century. This year's <laughs> been. <laughs> 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 Thankfully, I was able to go out to Karakou earlier this year uh, and touch a carnival. So I, I touched a carnival this year, but the Long amount I was time. planning to touch. You know I mean? Long Still time a bit since depressing. I won on somebody's side. <laughs> oh, these bumpers are swiss. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to round off, because you know I like resolutions as well. Mm. What are some <laughs> things you think we can do? Because I know, I know us. We're gonna go left. It's coming. It's probably gonna be a part two situation. You mm. know how. Do you it feel is. like this will probably die over pretty soon, and everyone will no. forget? Well, this is my thing. I feel like you can't really cancel someone you didn't put on a pedestal. So for the UK, we are pretty much business as usual because we never gave the man any money in the first place. Mm. But for the rest of the West Indies, it's up to them now to acknowledge who's coming in and, you know, just really making a mockery of the culture because at the end of the day, we're not his following. So Mm. he's put out that one little Dega Dega apology and people might forget by next year. I mean, like I said, for us over here, we didn't accept you in the beginning, so... I don't think it will. And the reason why I don't think it will is because this is not ending. That statement that came out, he has, he's got to do a part two. And white people always do a part two. And this one's got to be a part two is because other white um, influencers or people in our co- who take from our culture too have spoke. So now they're going to war each other. So you mean I'm there's going to be a you, second wave of white second, people teach right us to Because right now he's put his post out. <laughs> the comments are lit. Everyone's cursing the comments. But we, we are, what, day four now? There's two soccer songs already. This ain't over. My man's going to do a part two. Oh, he God, got, man. Because part one didn't make sense. And if he's trying to get his crowd back, because that's what he looks like he's doing. That's two soccer different. songs and a ballad. Honestly. <laughs> What in the Steven Spielberg? Because really and truly, by now, if he really cared and really felt sorry and really wanted all this negativity to go away, mm. his Instagram um, page would have been closed because you would have said, you know what, let me just go quiet for a bit. Let me not get, let people feed in. You gave people enough chance to find a second post to see, say that you said this again. I'm telling you. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think he looks like the type to go quiet, though, to be fair. I feel like he might he that, might go quiet, but I don't feel like he's gonna. No, that's what I'm saying. But that, uh, that's why I believe a part two will come to make us be like, okay, guys, it's been a couple of weeks. We've forgotten about this, but I just want to apologize to everybody. I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. La la la. Why do people do that victim thing when they cry all the time? And like, okay, we heard you the first time. So do you think sometimes we can be a bit too um, what's the lenient? Word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Too lenient sometimes. No, fuck that shit. We cancelled. Do you know what it is? I feel like sometimes people never want to be... Everyone's too concerned about what they could potentially look like and <coughs> and seem like than what it actually is. Mm. And the reality is, he took the piss. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. He mm, profited off the culture. Mm-hmm. You are now putting yourself in the face of the movement of winery. And <laughs> it's just like... Or cryptology. Honestly. <laughs> and it's just like, you said what you said because you genuinely feel that way. Because unfortunately, mm, a mm. lot of people were, you know, in awe of you because you was white and dancing. And now you feel that you're on this... this mm. And the thing, he feels like he's on this platform where he can turn around and say, yes, I did pave the way. I've done enough to say I've paved the way. But then, like, I'm not being funny. But you ain't the first person to get booked for dancing because you can't pave the way for people because we have a Roji that exists, In Hell Me exists, Empress Empress exists, Nandi exists. All these people exist and they're booked and busy. So explain to me how you, with a fake identity, has (laughs) paved the way. And you actually had to learn rhythm first to then learn how to whine. Yeah, to then get one. to the point <laughs> to even do the video. Step one. When I read that, duh, <laughs> then he got taught it. By who? He, if you read the article, it states that when he first came over, the local, the whoever, showed what, him Well, when he first went Lucia? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, you know that always happens, though. Mm. They see a white boy, let's show him it. Move this way. <laughs> well, Stick now he's taking it, it and then running with yeah. it, isn't it? Like, More than run, you see him jump up in the air. An entire you was over there walking up with a bayang and your glasses on <laughs> and it's yes come in anyways i'm about positivity as well guys mm. so what do you think we need to do as those in diaspora and those who are back home to actually get our communication better and to actually unify at the right times i think what needs to be there between obviously Caribbean people over here and the actual Caribbean people back home. There needs to be unity to be honest, because mm. I feel like with people back home, they are way too quick to try and question your authenticity or how Caribbean you are. Do you know what I mean? And like you said earlier, they were very easily accepting of a white person that's actually just come mm. and claimed an island and run mm. with it for how many years. So yeah, there actually needs to be some unity. And understand that obviously, whether we are living in the Caribbean or not, like most of our families were either like born in the Caribbean, like born in the Caribbean or whatever, or raised within the same culture. We ourselves are still raised within that same culture. We do still hold like the same values as people back home. Do you know what I mean? And we do understand the struggles that some of them might be going through over there. We don't actually think we are better because we live in the uk living in the uk is a struggle in itself sometimes you know what i mean speak on it you know what i mean so um yeah man there definitely needs to be some unity between us and understand that we are kind of facing the same battles do you know what i mean because even myself like obviously i'm here now but i'm not trying to be here for the rest of my life you know when i'm good i'm going back home because grenada is home to me do you understand so once i get good or whatever that's where i'm heading back and nobody can't come and tell me about i'm not Grenadian enough or whatever to actually live there. Must oh, you must be Grenadian enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you you try to you try to buy an iguana and, <laughs> and cook it after carnival. He needs a, he needs they, a Grenadian They can take you right back. <laughs> <laughs> they can take you Sir right Dingo. back. <laughs> you can oh, be Dingo four seven three if you want. Bye. Uh, nah, but definitely, I think unity is definitely the key because the way I see the Caribbean, we are one army mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we're all troops just in different trenches of course of course fighting for the same thing and i feel like if we're gonna be a thing where we got people in britain america wherever there needs to be on a united front for the one goal of the caribbean and not just out here we do things in uk they do things over there Mm. it doesn't work that way we we face so many different things as as a people um and whatever we do in our own countries where we live allows others to come over and do what they want to do and continue the conversation so we must unite and just you know have open conversations man and just be respectful of each other's you know spaces and where and where we've been our own struggles and come together as one i personally just hope this situation just opens everyone's eyes and seeing that um we are not as bad as you might think um we are as you lot said we are one and that regardless of if you were born back home or born here we love our cultures the exact same way mm-hmm. um it's okay to accept people. It's okay to teach people, but just don't let people take the piss out of who we are because we're struggling just to understand. But I also want people back home to understand England is not as lit as you, as you think it is. <laughs> um, it's not easy that at one all. pound might sound like a lot of money to you lot, but to some people here, the one pound is not a lot. 
Mm-hmm. So don't take, don't look at YouTube, Insta, Twitter, whatever it is, and think because we're living this so-called good life mm-hmm. that is good. We've made it good for ourselves, but that's in our own struggle. That's so true. just stop being narrow-minded and just open your eyes and listen. Use your listening ears mm. and just start having those conversations. You've got to have un- com- uncomfortable conversations now with us for you to understand our struggle because we're very much comfortable having those conversations with you too. As much as obviously we're over here and we are making lives as good as we can for ourselves, those of us with family back home, we would never mm. like do what we're doing here and just forget about our family mm. back home, you understand? Obviously I have a lot of family that are still in Grenada at the moment and every month I'm always either, if it's money or every now and again send a barrel or box, whatever, do you know what I mean? Mm. Just so I know that my family over there are good even people that are close to my family that are not actually family but like close family friends you get me mm. whatever they need if we can get it and give it to them we'll make sure of it you know what I mean mm. if it's money and then it shows you that's <laughs> in a way of we might not be making a lot of money but we still want to support what's back home of course of and course. we would never forget who made us mm-hmm. who, where we came from even if it means it's a small pasta and a rice or whatever anything's better than nothing mm. And if any carnival bands want me to work up, you know, <laughs> any carnival, I am free. <laughs> Please, you don't need he. Just bring in me. Seems they got a free slot now. Yeah, a free slot. They're coming in. They're coming in. <laughs> so yes. I think for that we're going to commence this segment, but we definitely want to hear what everyone has to say. It's a conversation. It's not to bash anybody and make anyone less than or whatever. Mm-hmm. We want to see the comments. We want to see everyone supporting each other. And I think even us, as a, even though we're a small podcast right now, but we definitely want to be using our platform to, to promote other people's stuff as well. If you've got a business or, you know, even if you've got a podcast or you've got whatever you're doing, you can send it through to girls from throwing at gmail.com and we will also post it on our page too. Like It's, it's all about all of us helping each other now because at this point it's becoming too much I, 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 I when things when things are good but when things are wrong it's like no it was you it was you it was you just everyone come together and just mm. look let's just get it together i done talk here yes, man. let me get together let me fit let me do what we got to do you understand exactly. yeah we're now um hiring dj dingo he'll be giving out wines to those huh? in the diaspora. Huh? Um, and it's free <laughs> Just, we're, we're, just catching the guana first, though. Catching the guana first, a bit too. Yeah, his fee is paid. We're Wait, all you about know sharing. if I had the guana running loose over here, that would have catched that a long time already. You know, if only foxes were delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ain't tried that touch, you know. know I mean, it, might, it might be on the on the cards. <laughs> I'll let you look now. Well, I'm one question asking. Who da pevin it? Who pevin it? He pevin it? Who pevin it? She pevin it? Who pevin it? I pevin it? Who pevin it? We da pevin it?